and welcome to my kitchen. It is a uh, dreary and chilly August day. It's like 60 degrees out. I actually, I don't even know if it is quite 60. I was in town earlier today and my car said 57. Uh, so that's a great day to be inside. So I am, uh, I got a couple projects that I'm gonna do today. Um, this is all stuff that's gonna go into the farm store. So I've got 10 dozen eggs. I'm gonna make some pickled eggs. Um, I also have, I have a bin of produce that I brought in from the farm store that this isn't like good quality to sell, but that doesn't mean that I can't turn it into something that we can sell later in the farm store. So all the stuff that we're doing today is stuff for the farm store. So along with beef and pork and eggs and vegetables, I sell a variety of value added products. This is kind of some of that stuff that I usually have for sale. So I'm gonna kind of like multitask, do a couple different projects. I maybe have taken like in my brain have like too big of a plan for like the time frame that I have to do this, but you know, I think that's pretty typical. Um, so <laughs> I also picked some onions from the garden for the pickled eggs, um, have some jalapenos so we can do some spicy, uh, some fresh dill also from the garden. Uh, so, and then I've got my dehydrator and it's actually full of stuff and I'll show you what I have in it and I'm going to load it back up and run the dehydrator again. And I've been selling, I've done this for about a year or so now, I've been selling like dehydrated vegetables um, and it's just like the stuff that I've left over that doesn't sell or like it just, it didn't sell so it's just like not super great quality. Like I have some zucchini here that like the end is squishy, like I'll cut this very end off but like can still do something with this. Um, I had a little bit of asparagus left at asparagus season when it was over. The guy had eaten all I wanted, it didn't sell. And so I just like chop it up and put it in the dehydrator and have little bags of dehydrated asparagus. And I think I have like, what's in there right now? Like some carrots, some eggplant and scallions. And so I just kind of, whatever's left. Um, a lot of herbs, I sell herbs and spices. I do like red pepper flakes and green pepper flakes and like dill and parsley and chives and like all the things that I grow, I try and make them into something. If, you know, like fresh season is a very short period of time here in Wyoming. So, you know, I like to have things like throughout the year and like a diversified amount of retail products to sell. So I'm gonna get out the Instapot. That's how I'm gonna cook my eggs for pickled eggs, how I'm gonna hard boil them is gonna be in the Instapot. And while that's like starting, I can go ahead and like empty out the dehydrator, show you guys what's in that. So we're gonna like multitask some projects here. Really the only thing I ever use my Instapot for is to, to cook eggs. I don't, I know I should use it more, but I, like I just don't. And uh, I tried to make rice in it one time. I know lots of people make rice in it and love it. It was mushy and gross. And I can achieve mushy and gross rice on the stove just fine. <laughs> so it wasn't, it wasn't worth the hassle of the Instapot, in my opinion. But yeah, I just have never really used this that much. It does do hard boiled eggs really good though. Um, it's the only way that I will do the farm fresh eggs, uh, it, like hard boil them. It's the only way I can get them to peel. And I've tried, like I've tried all the tricks. I've tried the, all the different things you add into water to like make them easier to peel. I think you can do like baking soda and vinegar and salt or all kinds of different things. I've tried all of those and I find the Instapot to be the best for hard boiled eggs. Okay, so I've got like the trivet in there. I put in two dozen eggs at a time. That's how I do it and just load them up. These are cold, I just took them out of the fridge. I don't know that it like makes a difference or anything. There's our eggs in the Instapot. See, only thing I use it for, eggs. <laughs> okay, that's gonna come to pressure. This is the dehydrator that I have. It is a Colzer brand. I just bought it off of Amazon. I've had it for a couple of summers. I didn't spend a ton of money on it because I didn't know how much I would use it. And I will say I use it a lot. It's really starting to be produce season from the gardens and stuff, which is great. And so this, like every week it's kind of like, what do I have that I can 
do something with, something that I can make something with, or just like, what do I need to like freeze or deal with, like do something with so I can have it like later on, because maybe I don't have time. Uh, this is, this is zucchini. Oh, in the, once we get into tomato season, which like they're just starting to turn ripe, then like every couple days a week, I am like freezing tomatoes. And then in the winter time, I can make salsa and everything. Oh, my hands are clean, by the way. I wash my hands, of course. Um, yeah, keeping the dehydrator going. I don't do a lot of like canning for the farm store during the summer. Most of that happens in the winter time. I just don't have time in the summer, so it's just get it frozen, get it um, like preserved in a way that like then I can use it later. So I make a lot of my like salsa and hot sauce from like frozen tomatoes, well hot sauces from peppers. But yeah, I mean, so like this winter we can do that. Uh, I had a tiny bit of zucchini. Uh, I don't always, like these need labels, so that's why they're not in the farm store. I don't always package stuff right away, so I have like a bin of stuff that I keep stuff in baggies, so then when like I do have enough to package, uh, so I'm gonna go grab that. And I think I might actually have enough zucchini and summer squash that I like, We'll have more than a couple of bags. I only have two bags of asparagus because that was like all that was left. But let me go grab the bin. We'll see what we have. This is my bin of dehydrated stuff. Sometimes, like like I was saying, like I just don't have enough of it to like do anything with, and so I just wait until I have enough. So yeah, I do have a little bit of summer squash and zucchini that I can now add this to and package. Although I'm gonna do more this week, so maybe I'll just wait. Um, I have some chives that I dehydrated. I have been dehydrating microgreens and I haven't done anything with these yet other than just like put them in a baggie. But what I, like what my vision is, is to like run these through like a spice grinder, like a coffee grinder, and then um, sell it as like a like, I don't want to say that it's like a health food thing, right? Because I'm not like a nutritionist or anything, but like microgreens are super like nutrient dense and then if you dehydrate them and like blend them and you put the like add a scoop to your smoothies or something, that's my vision. That's what I'm going to do with that. Um, I have some sage from last year. By the time I ground this down, this was going to be like a teaspoon of ground sage. <laughs> so I just put it in here. Uh, yeah, lots of chives. Another, like I have a whole bag of microgreens that I need to try and grind and see if that works. And then some like red pepper flakes that I will crush up and uh, bottle and label and sell. These are the bags that I use. I got them from Uline, I believe. Um, they're just like a real thick plastic bag. So I really, like I get a lot of my packaging from Uline. Most of it comes from there. Um, I source from a few other places. Um, there's like, of course, nowhere like local that I can buy packaging, so. Sourcing from the internet. All right. Oh, no, this is actually not, oh, I was wrong. This is why we label things. This is cucumber. I was gonna make tzatziki powder. See, like sometimes I'm ambitious and then like I don't, I don't do anything with it. But again, I had like a vision. So hopefully I'll have more cucumbers this year. I have more cucumbers then I can finish that that plan that vision all right I'm gonna make sure my hands are clean and dry before I like this is dehydrated I obviously mean, don't want to put like I don't want to introduce any moisture into this because I don't want it to like mold or anything and if I do touch it I obviously want my hands to be clean all right we're gonna label it and then the last thing that's in my dehydrator is scallions. So I grow white and purple scallions, and then I just chop them up. These are kind of the biggest pain in the butt. Like, they're kind of flying everywhere. They are one of my most popular sellers, though, for dehydrated vegetables. Like, I did a ton of them last year, and they sold really well throughout the winter. And I did some earlier this spring, too. And uh, yeah, they sold really well. So I'm kind of finishing out like one, well, we just pulled it today or yesterday, 
Tuesday, I don't know, whatever, whatever day it is. Uh, I had scallions in the spring high tunnel and I just finished that bed of them. Um, they went into the veggie baskets for our Edible Prairie Project on Tuesday. They've gotten a lot of scallions. They've had like three weeks of scallions. Um, they're delicious. So I don't, like nobody's complaining that they're getting a lot of scallions three out of the four weeks that they've had baskets. But yeah, we finished out that bed. They um, are massive. They are more like onions than scallions, but that's sometimes what happens. Okay, so my Instapot just did its five minutes of cook time and then I let it natural release for five minutes before I open the vent, five or six minutes um, right in that area. So we've got just a few minutes until eggs will be ready to come out. But here's all the scallions that we ended up with. There is enough here that like I will package them. Ended up with five bags of scallions and then just like a little bit left over that I will just put in this baggie. I can't get the thing to stay, so I'm just gonna stand here and hold it. <laughs> uh, I really enjoy making like value added products for the farm store. It's probably like, like I love growing the food and stuff, but I also really enjoy like turning it into something else. And I also really hate food waste, especially from stuff that I grow. Like I try not to waste food, but it of course happens. I always say that like grocery store me is more ambitious than like cooking me. <laughs> uh, I'm not immune to like food waste. It happens. I do try and make an effort to have minimal food waste and especially like you know, I started those scallions, you know, in the grow room in, um, you know, in a paper pot, you know, transplant system in, in like February. So like I've had a lot of energy and time into that. And so I don't want them to go to waste. And so if I can find a way to turn that into something else, like that's one of my favorite things to do and what I really, really enjoy doing. So that's why I do all this. Is it a lot? Like, yeah, a hundred percent. It's a lot. Do I need to do all this? No, I don't. But like I said, it's what I enjoy doing. I'm just gonna make an ice bath. Uh, it's gonna help the eggs feel better. The ice is gonna melt. These are a million degrees. I don't know if I said this earlier. They're like just a couple weeks old, these eggs are. So they're from my chickens, of course. I don't buy store-bought eggs, like, ever. I mean, I wouldn't say ever. Sometimes in the wintertime, you know, when they... They always quit laying in the winter, and, like, that's fine. It's part of their natural cycle. And, you know, I just know that that's going to happen. Or sometimes I don't, like, have no eggs, but it definitely, like, slows down. Sometimes I have had to buy eggs, like, in the wintertime. And it, like, never fails. Like, as soon as I break down and buy eggs, then then they start laying. So that's how you like shame your chickens into laying eggs for you again, is to go buy grocery store eggs and go show them that you had to buy grocery store eggs. <laughs> but this time, I still have a ton of eggs. I maybe have too many chickens, but I don't really think that's a thing. So I don't have too many chickens. I just have too many eggs right now. And uh, <laughs> I am, like I go through phases with eggs where like I really like eggs and I like eat them a lot. And then I have times where I'm like, no, absolutely not. Like, don't want an egg. And I don't want an egg right now, like at all. So, and the kids are kind of the same way too. They definitely go through phases where they want lots of eggs and other times where they don't eat any. So like nobody's really eating eggs right now. So that's why we have a surplus. I have this one chicken. She lays the coolest eggs. I don't know which one she is because I have like a hundred of them, but it's just a, it's a blue egg, but it's like always got this like super dark point part on the like pointy tip and stuff and I think it's like it's like you dyed an easter egg and like you know how always like one end ends up being like lighter or darker depending on how it sits in the in the cup of dye I just think that's so cool so I usually just leave the water run that's gonna be loud and annoying <laughs> so, let's be an egg. Um, I like to tap it on the where the air sac is at so on the it's not an air sac, I guess. I don't know. There's a little bubble of air in there and it's usually at the bottom at the more round, not the pointy end. And then roll it. 
see how we did. Eh, not the prettiest. Not the worst farm fresh egg I've ever peeled. I can tell you that. These are still a little warm. I should probably let them cool just a few more minutes. But, like, it's super hot. Farm fresh eggs don't peel well, if you don't know, if you're not familiar with that. They're usually quite disgusting to peel and just, like, really, just end up being really ugly. So, I have found the Instapot to be the best. And then like once these cool down just a little bit more, I'll throw some more ice in and stuff and like let the cold water run on them. Oh yeah, this one's peeling great. Until I use the Instapot, no matter what like little tricks and stuff I did, whatever the internet told me, like all the things to add or the different techniques, like I never got a farm fresh egg to peel good. There's still just like a little bit of the membrane. You can feel the membrane, that also grosses me out. Like eggs do gross me out, kind of. Chickens gross me out. I, like, I love my chickens, but like they're gross. <laughs> Anybody who has chickens, like you get it. Anyhow, that's like a perfectly peeled farm fresh egg. So I'm just gonna peel all these. I'm gonna be here for a minute. I'm gonna reload the Instapot and get the next batch going. And then we'll be back. And if I have any time in between, like when this is happening and stuff, like, We'll work on the dehydrator project. So that's kind of always how like I like to roll is like multiple projects, multitasking, doing way more than I should at one time, but that's that's what I like. I have four things of microgreens left over. Uh, well, three microgreens and this is uh, pea shoots. So microgreens are, they are grown to their first set of leaves, which is actually a cotyledal leaf and will actually like fall off if you let the plant mature into like what it's supposed to be. But you harvest them when they're young and like just in those first two leaves are out and that's when they're super nutrient dense. They're tender. These are pea shoots. It like, these taste like a pea, tastes exactly like a pea. And, and I have radish. Radish is not one of like my more popular microgreens. I grow a lot of broccoli microgreens. So I just spread it out on the tray, like not even super well, like they're touching and it's going to be okay and my tray's wet because i just washed it and rinsed it and i didn't dry it but it's going in a dehydrator so it's going to dry um, yeah so you grow like just like their second set of leaves isn't even out yet so those are cut alleles the next set of leaves would be true leaves which would then like look more like what a radish leaf like looks like so yeah radish isn't one of my like more popular but i like to grow it because it's like it's fast it's easy like they're all fast and easy. Like they're all grown. It takes like, well, I plant on Monday, plant microgreens every Monday, and then harvest the following Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, depending on like what they look like. I still have to like pay attention to them and stuff. But I, they're best used within like seven days. Um, I put them at 50% off if they don't sell the first week because they're still like super fresh. Like I used to get rid of them after like seven days and then like I would just eat them or whatever. And I was like, these are like still perfect. So I will let them be in the farm store for two weeks and then I pull them and uh, like we'll dehydrate them or I eat them because they're like, they're still fine. I'm sure they like lose some nutrients and stuff like the longer they set. I would assume. Again, not a nutritionist. That's not my thing. But yeah, so like I said, I'm gonna make these into like a little powder that's like healthy. Again, can't make those claims. And then, you know, people can do with it what they want. I need another tray. Yeah, just make like a thin-ish layer of them. These are actually like a tricolor radish, so there's more than one kind in there. Easy peasy. Next on my, or like next in my bin of things that I need to deal with is some rainbow chard. Rainbow chard, it like, within like a couple of days, it usually will go, like it'll get wilty and stuff, and so like that's fine. But I just wanna, I've never dehydrated it. I'm gonna try and dehydrate it. And I think like similarly to like the, um, like the microgreens and stuff and making like it into like a powder that you can 
add into stuff. I think I can do the same with the weeds. I should have Googled it. That's how I learn a lot of things is I Google things a lot. Uh, I think the stems, you know, are not maybe gonna like grind up like the leaves would. I don't know if this is gonna work, but we're gonna try it and we're gonna see what happens. So I'm gonna cut the stems off. I'll probably, I will just chop those up. Like not this one, like this one doesn't look super good. So I'm gonna try it. We're gonna chop up the leaves a little bit. I'm not gonna like chop them super small because I'm gonna grind them later if this works. It's gonna shrivel up into nothing. It's like gonna be like worse than spinach when you cook it. Sometimes I think it's fun to try new things and see if it works or not. And like, like if I didn't do something with this product, like I would, I would feed it to the goats and Petunia the mini pig, she like loves rainbow chard. Like it's one of her favorite things. So it wouldn't go to waste. And like, I don't feel bad about feeding produce to animals because I feel like that's at least one way to use it up and not just have it go like in the garbage. But I would rather have it stay something that can be consumed by humans. So it's one bundle of chard. I think it's worth like an experiment. So we're just gonna chop it. Like that's it. And it's gonna shrink down to like hardly nothing. Okay, so that's done cooking. It's done its five minutes on the egg timer thing, and we're gonna let it sit for another five minutes before I release the steam. When I got my dehydrator, the like recipe book that came with it was like straight out of like China and Google Translate and stuff. And so like, it was quite comical to read and uh, because it wasn't translated very well. Uh, but it said like, make sure everything's like single layer and not touching. And I think I like did that for like one or two trays. And I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this. Like it shrinks. <laughs> and so like, I don't like stack it on top of itself, but like, like I'm not super particular about it being spread out because I feel like it's gonna work itself out. I will sometimes like rotate my trays because I do notice that like stuff dehydrates better like in the back. And so sometimes I'll take them out and do like a little quarter turn. And that kind of helps things dehydrate faster, but it's not that technical. So I try to not overcomplicate things and just kind of see what's gonna happen. I'm just gonna cut these like I said, it's going to shrink down to like nothing. We'll try that. Over the last couple years that I've had the dehydrator, I've dehydrated a lot of things. And like a lot of, like, I started a lot with like red peppers because I wanted to make red pepper flakes and like herbs. And I will say like, I tried dehydrating like cayenne peppers and habanero peppers like whole without cutting them up because I just didn't want to spend the time to cut them up and it took forever for them to dry when they were left whole so chopping does help but it's time consuming but I don't know I mean obviously I'm not like standing here watching the dehydrator but it did take days <laughs> so here's the the leafy greens I think I'll get this all on two trays The second tray is probably going to be a little bit fuller than it should be. That's not going to be horrible. I'm going to clean up this mess. I have water everywhere. And then, oh, it's time to release the eggs. Let's see how the second batch turned out. One thing I have found if I'm just like continuously filling, like I usually do 10 dozen pickled eggs at a time. I don't end up with quite that many because I will have like a few eggs that are just not good. But uh, one thing I found is that if I just like immediately reload it and don't like, like there's water left in the bottom. And so if I like reuse the water and don't put like cold water in, it's like they, like it heats up too fast. That one turned out perfect. Like, really good. Uh, my bowl of eggs is in the fridge. I found 
found that like if I use warm water and like don't change out the water in the Instapot, it's like it comes up to pressure too fast and then you'll end up with, it won't happen like the second batch, but like the third or fourth batch, I'll end up with a batch that's like, you can tell they're just like undercooked. Like the whites aren't set, um, the yolks are like jammy texture and they'll just be like a nightmare to peel. Like they really need to be like firmly cooked in order for the the farm fresh eggs to peel. Oh, this egg's pretty too. Like look at the, it's got like a gradient. So I usually have found that like it works best if I dump out the water, put cold water in and just let it sit for like a few minutes because this stays pretty warm. That's all my egg peeling tricks that I have. It works most of the time. Sometimes it doesn't. And if I liked egg salad, I would eat egg salad. <laughs> and so if I really like a lot of bad eggs and like if the kids don't want any eggs because they're not in an egg phase, then I will just feed them back to the chickens so they get a little protein boost. All right, I'm gonna do this and then we'll go back to the dehydrator. I remember when I was doing farmer's markets, we'd always have these like cold weather days in August. I'm glad I get to like be inside and just like do the stuff I want to do and like just have customers. So I went to the farm store, I was on the phone, like I got to do like my normal, I get to do my normal stuff and like still have a retail business. And like that's what I am at the end of the day. Like yes, I'm a farm and I'm a ranch, but I'm like I'm a retail business. And if I don't sell the products that I produce, like I wouldn't have any income and I wouldn't be able to keep taking care of these animals and growing these gardens. Cause like it all takes money to do all that. So, you know, I, I think about that a lot, like that I am, I'm so much more retail than like Gilbert was, than my stepdad was. Like it's just, it's a completely different business model and there's nothing wrong with being a cow calf operation. It just, like it didn't work for the size that we were. And so, you know, now it's just, everything's direct to consumer it's so much more retail and like I spend so much more of my day anymore like focused on like that retail side of it that end side of it than just like taking care of animals like that's still a super important part of my day but it's also summertime and like cows get checked once a day like they're chilling on summer pasture like they're low maintenance right now which is great so I can like do all this retail stuff I never left my pantry open do you guys love look at my mess in there <laughs> let's close that <laughs> wintertime project organize the pantry I always leave it open like I'm so bad about it sorry if that wasn't bothering you in the background all right another tray of zucchini and summer squash you guys can't see all of it do you think it's all gonna fit on one tray probably not which is fine I have just one more thing to put in the dehydrator and I have some scallions still So I have four trays of this. It is the next day. I did not get my project finished last night because like life happened and uh, Michelle came out to check on her cows. We visited, I had to do some mom stuff. It was like nine o'clock all of a sudden, had to like eat dinner. So anyhow, I did finish the eggs. <laughs> These are all the eggs that I have. Um, this morning I have sliced some onions. They made me cry some jalapenos from the garden. These aren't as spicy as I thought they were gonna be. So I have some red pepper flakes to put into. I'm gonna do half like regular and half spicy. Um, I'm gonna put everything, I use these plastic like quart deli containers. So we're gonna fill these up and then I'll make the brine. I'm gonna like guesstimate how much brine I need based upon how many containers I end up with. And I did throw the scallions in the dehydrator and um, it ran overnight. I had to check it to make sure it just like finished. So I'm gonna check and make sure everything in there is dry and I'll show you guys that. But let's let's finish pickled eggs so I can get these in the farm store. Um, it's still like a cold and dreary day outside. Um, it's still cloudy. Like I have some harvesting to do this afternoon in the in the garden. Zucchini needs harvested, green beans need harvested. So I've got some stuff to do, but I wanted to finish this in the morning while it was chilly. 
So I'm just putting some onions in. Oops, just dropped some on the counter. These are so strong. These are white onions uh, from the garden. Everything is from the garden, uh, which is great. Like I love doing this during the summer when I have all the stuff from the garden. In the winter time, like I don't. So I obviously just will use like store onions, but these are stuck together. Um, but I've got so jalapenos, onions, and a garlic too. That's from the garden. These are coming apart. I don't have patience for that right now. I have other ones that will come apart. I can usually put 10 eggs in. Um, I had some that didn't peel. Like that's a totally normal thing. I think about a dozen or so that were just like pretty ugly out of the 10 dozen I did. So I should have about nine dozen. That's what it looks like with 10 eggs in it. And then I may do a few more onions. I cut up quite a few. I'm gonna put pickling spice in. Just like a few more things to add, make the brine. But I just like I need to know how many I um how much brine I need. So brine is just simply a mix of like water, vinegar, uh, usually salt. Well, there's always salt, a little bit of sugar, and then you put in whatever spices you want. So I will use pickling spice in this, red pepper flakes, like I said, and the ones that are spicy. I didn't finish filling this one. How many's in there? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, there's usually a little sugar to like balance it. I'm gonna use white vinegar for this. You can kind of use kind of like you can use different vinegars. You can use apple cider if you like it. Um, just kind of whatever you like. But white vinegar is pretty just like neutral. It's what I typically use for pickled eggs. I prefer apple cider vinegar. I don't like pickled eggs. Like I'm not eating these. <laughs> these are not my favorite. But like for dill pickles and stuff like that, cucumber pickles, I like apple cider vinegar. All right, I have, I got, I have three eggs left. I'll probably try and squeeze them into containers. I have 10 containers. So we're gonna do five spicy. There we go, those are thick. So you get a little like bonus of like pickled onions, pickled jalapenos, there'll be some garlic. Just kind of divide these up evenly. Yeah, I was surprised I like tried a little slice of jalapeno. It's not as spicy, like they smell spicy, but they like don't taste as spicy. They'll get spicier as we go on in the summer. And maybe if it was like, hot again and not just like 60 degrees out it would get spicy. We're gonna add some red pepper flakes to these ones. I feel like if you make something spicy it like should actually be spicy. So these are the red pepper flakes that I have in the farm store. Um, I like I have a recipe that I found on the internet. I kind of like follow it. Um, it's from spendwithpennies.com. Uh, so I basically just did it so I could figure out like the brine ratio. So brine ratios are kind of like always different depending on like what recipe you follow obviously or like what you're pickling and stuff. And so this is basically a three to one ratio of vinegar to water and then a third a cup sugar and a teaspoon of coarse salt. Um, and then you can kind of add like it has like garlic and dill and pickling spice. Like you can add like what you want into it and kind of the quantities. So I am going to, on the stove, mix that brine up. I have 10 containers. Um, I probably need about, these are quart size. I probably need about, oh, a cup and a half of liquid-ish per container. This is what, like, I always do this, like I guess how much I need and then I end up being short and end up making more brine. If you make extra brine, you can just put it in the fridge and keep it so it's not like it's a waste. So maybe just figure two cups. That seems like a lot. I'm gonna go with a cup and a half. So I'm gonna get this on the stove, get it heated up, just the vinegar, sugar, water, and the salt, and then heat it to everything dissolves and then let it cool just like slightly. I have some store-bought pickling spice. It is like bay leaves and peppercorns, mustard, coriander, I think. Um, I have, you know, taken it out of the package. I believe it's just like McCormick brand. 
I'm gonna do like a full tablespoon in each one. I ended up doing a triple batch of brine, so we'll see if that ends up being enough. Oh, there's dill seed in here. All kinds of stuff. Uh, I have some garlic that I grew. So I'm gonna put a clove of garlic. This has just like been a week or so since I harvested this, so it's still like, it's super, like the bulbs are still like super tight. Usually you can like press on a bulb and like get it to break up. It's not breaking up at all. <laughs> Some of these cloves are real big too. Like, yeah, this clove is giant. Like this bulb is like three cloves. I'm actually gonna cut those then. Homegrown garlic is super spicy. I need a knife. Those are my garlic cloves. So like three cloves for that whole bulb. So I'm gonna, I should peel these first. I am going to slice these in half. That's, I love, like this is like the third or fourth year I've grown garlic. I finally have enough that I can sell some of it in the farm store. Uh, typically I would just save it for myself for like my hot sauce and salsa and stuff like that and to replant. So you, like you replant once you, so like I bought garlic and then that's hard neck garlic. Um, and then every year I would buy like five pounds or so. And then I would replant some of it and like keep some of it for my own like personal use. And I finally, I think after three years of buying garlic, like I finally have enough. Like I could have just replanted my whole stash the first year, but I didn't. But yeah, garlic's kind of cool because like it is kind of like a self-sustaining crop. Like once you have some and then like it does do better like i've definitely noticed that like the stuff that i've planted um like that i replanted like not that i purchased was like definitely bigger the second year because it gets acclimated to your climate which is super great there we go garlic and everything now we just need dill this is the dill that i harvested from the garden uh also one of the scraps that like once you once you have it in your garden once or twice like you just let it go back to seed and it like you never have to plant more dill ever my garden's kind of overrun with dill like last year i actually pulled a bunch of it out before it went to seed because it was just so like unruly i washed this when i picked it so i don't need to wash it again but yeah i'm gonna put like four sprigs of dill or so in each container I have a few onions left. I will uh, just put these in the fridge and use them over the next couple of days, or I could put them in the freezer and then use them for something later. Okay, our brine is done. <laughs> Smells like vinegar. <laughs> Went right up my nose. <laughs> Perfect. Um, a, it came to a boil, everything's dissolved, the salt and the sugar. And uh, it's still warm, and that's okay. It has cooled slightly. It's obviously not like at like a rolling boil. Don't breathe it. <laughs> obviously, I put my eggs in the fridge overnight, so the eggs are cool, which is fine. I've done this plenty of times where I've like just like what I did last night, I like started a project and like didn't have enough time. <laughs> I gotta quit sticking my face over. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna need just a little bit more. I've got two left. All right, so I have like two cups in here. Let's let's measure one and see it's spilling everywhere cuz like why did why did they why did things not pour out of this? Well, yeah, I mean I used a little over a cup. <laughs> it's short plus like maybe topping everything up. A little bit more brine. So that last one and then some lids on. I'm gonna I think just add just a tiny bit more to everyone. I'd rather kind of 
overfill on Brian and make a mess. It's going to make a mess. I can obviously clean up a mess. But I want to make sure, like I said, everything is submerged. I don't want like a ton of mess. The brine is like, it's not, it's a little sticky because it has sugar in it. Oh, that's perfect. All done. These will take a few days to be pickled. I am gonna put a label on them and put them in the farm store today. I will just let people know that, you know, they just were pickled. So give them a few days before you eat them. You can eat them probably within like three days. Oh, this one's leaking. We'll do that. We'll let it leak here in my house before I take it to the farm store. Yeah, these are all done. I'm gonna take them. Uh, I'm gonna show you the dehydrator. I think I'm gonna probably have to turn it on for a few more hours. It did run for, I think 14 hours is what it ran for. But let's look inside and see how everything is doing. I ended up with two trays of scallions that I chopped up at like nine o'clock last night. Yeah, they feel dry. I think probably the only thing that's maybe not all the way dry is the zucchini and the summer squash. Yeah, see it's still like flexible. I want it to be just a bit drier. Look what they turned into though. Like there's nothing there. Let's see how our, uh... oh, it's crispy, which is perfect. That's what I want. This is the rainbow chard. See, like nothing. <laughs> Did some of it fall down? Yeah, maybe. I can't really see back there. And then the microgreens always shrink like so much. I will take everything out of the dehydrator except for the zucchini and the summer squash and I'll run that again for like another hour probably. Oh, and what temperature did I dehydrate on? I usually dehydrate like at a pretty low temperature. So I did 119 degrees, which is kind of like what's recommended for, there's like a temperature chart up here. So like herbs is like 95 to 125, vegetables 120 to 135. Um, if you're doing meat, it's like 145 to 155. I do like what did I say 119 and that's kind of just where it like sits and hangs out I don't usually really like change it I turned it off but the fan's still running did I turn it off no maybe <laughs> see it's like straight from China it does what it wants uh but yeah I uh I usually just do like 119 it seems to work for like what I'm doing and I think like doing the microgreens at like that like herb temperature and stuff like is better. They uh, they seem to dehydrate better and they don't turn brown or anything like that. Like if you dehydrate at too high of a temperature, then you can have like some discoloration that happens. So yeah, thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Thank you dehydrator for turning off, appreciate that. Uh, I really do, like I said, enjoy like these value added products and taking products that I have access from that like I'm producing here on the farm and the ranch and turning them into like something different. Like it's always been something that I really, really enjoy. And it was kind of nice to have like a couple of cool, cloudy, like not super great days outside that I could come inside and like do something that I enjoy. I love the gardens. Like I love this time of the year, but it is kind of nice to have a break. Um, I did have to wear a coat today, like when I did chores, which is fine, <laughs> it is what it is. But yeah, it was nice to have a little break and uh, rather than like, like I would be cold, I'm not gonna lie. I don't enjoy cold. Um, so, you know, I would be outside and kind of be a little bit miserable, but like this was very enjoyable to spend a couple days inside, parts of days and get some stuff done. And I don't know where I'm gonna put these in the farm store fridge cause like I have tons of produce right now, which is great. I'm gonna have to go do some creative rearranging. But yeah, thank you for hanging out with me while I make some stuff for the farm store and uh, show you kind of like what I do, you know, besides just garden and farm. So I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time.